Tammy, oh, Tammy, oh, Tammy, keep it up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Hello, and welcome to another episode of 207 Aikido. So, I've posted a lot about softness and connection in Aikido. These are critical skills, and I think soft styles of practice are an important way to build them. But I'm not going to lie, I like a little competition every now and again. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about randori and how it is possible to maintain softness and fluidity even in the highest levels of competition. This is not to say that I've gotten there. When it comes to competition, I do better with kata. When I do well in a randori match, it's usually on the strength of stabs. I did get one satisfying technique in London, but it didn't end up counting. To be fair, I could see why someone might call this a wakigata me yuko, and I've had the judges rule in my favor more than once. Big props to Kenny and the whole Vassar team at last year's Nationals. They did really well overall. And though I may have won this particular match on points, Kenny definitely had his way with me. And he would have won if he could have stopped himself from grabbing my dogi so many times. Although, as I said, these things do cut both ways. That's how randori is for me. A few shidos here, a yuko there, a stab if I'm lucky, and basically nothing that looks very impressive. But this is not the case for everyone though. Take for instance, Josh Ramey. Actually, the funny thing is, that get on didn't count either. But the point is, if you want to see people getting thrown in a randori match, you need to watch more of Josh's matches. Actually, you're in luck, because a while back I put together a short demo reel for Josh, who is trying to go pro. Take a good, long look, rewind it, and watch it again. Josh is the real deal. Individual champion at internationals in 2011, and I was lucky enough to play him in a faux finals match at Nationals in 2012. I was surprised and very impressed by just how soft and fluid Josh had become. I'm not going to say the randori made him softer, but it certainly didn't tighten him up like it does to some people. I'm here to tell you that the champion of the world plays loose. Now, don't get me wrong, Josh is big bigger than probably most of his opponents. When I asked him about what he wanted on the demo reel, he told me, if you can find some good clean throws against folks that doesn't make it look like I'm trashing small people, that would be great. 
I'm not gonna lie, I had some footage of him trashing small people as well. Take this match. I filmed it because I used to train with Sawai-san, the Japanese guy, on Thursday nights. And then there was the match against Shimada-san. When I saw this match for the first time on YouTube, I already knew that Shimada had lost. When I saw the technique that's coming up, I silently cheered for Shimada. Josh, if you're watching this, let me explain. Shimada is small and fearless. When it comes to sports, that's who I root for. Now, this is impressive. Second down and goal. They go to Bettis again. Bettis gets hit. Still driving. Touchdown! We've talked about missed tackles, but these are just broken tackles by Jerome Bettis. Bam! Bam! Well, I tell you, some guys, you get down in the red zone, down by the goal line, and they just have a nose for the end zone. Jerome Bettis is a big, big man. But that's just it. I can never aspire to being big. I've tried, it's not in the cards for me. I'm always gonna be the little guy, and that's who I really like rooting for. Second down, second and three. Woodhead, again, staying so low with no one sees him. Still not down, Danny Woodhead takes it home for the touchdown. What a brilliant run. I can't aspire to be big, but I can aspire to be fearless. So you're going to have to forgive me if I was rooting for Shimada, even though I knew the outcome. The other thing is that people tend to lean forwards in Randori. In part, I think, because it's a game with rules and not a fight. So it was nice to see Shimada make Josh pay a little. Of course, Josh paid it right back. That was a particularly memorable use of size, but there was a lot more where it came from. But then there was a lot of skill on video as well. Josh has a head start on most of us because of his size, but you don't become world champion without a hell of a lot of skill as well. Josh had a lot of skill in Kyoto in 2009. He made it to the semis, and a lot of people think he deserved to be in the finals. But in 2009, Josh relied a lot more on raw power. Before London in 2011, Josh spent some time, a couple of months I think, training in Tokyo. This, I think, was where he really developed the finesse that carried him to victory. I'm really serious when I talk about Josh's softness. As I said, I was fortunate to play Josh at Nationals. I didn't earn the right to play him, but I weaseled my way into an exhibition finals match after William Ball sensei they had to withdraw due to injury.
in his Randori seminar before the tournament, Josh had talked about how light Junji Konaka plays. After our match, Josh was nice enough to compare my lightness with Konaka's. That was the best compliment he could have given me. And it's a compliment I can return 100%. I knew Josh was nimble for his size, but I was blown away by just how soft he was. So I can tell you from personal experience, the stuff you're going to see on this demo reel is the real deal. All right, I think I've talked enough. Have a look. on his ass. Bring the strikes up from his belly. Bring the strikes up from his belly. There you go. There you go. Daniel, 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 keep it up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you're still watching, here's our exhibition match in LA. Josh cleaned my clock a bit, but it was a blast.
So, there you have it. You can't win them all, but a little competition is not always a bad thing, and, who knows, it might even help you. Josh, I will see you in Tokyo.